Forex. CBN abandons unification policy, reintroduces discriminatory rates. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, may have discreetly abandoned the much commended foreign exchange rate harmonization less than a year after the policy direction was announced by the authority. Market data have suggested. Besides the black market rate, which is independent of the CBN operation, three distinct rates previously submerged by the convergence policy have resurfaced. BDC, NAFEM, and customs duty rates. At the weekend, the Nigerian Customs Service, NCS, which takes instruction from the CBN, relaxed the benchmark rate for duty clearance to 1,164 naira to a dollar, subsidizing the exchange rate for importers by as much as over 10% or 175 naira per dollar. Last week, trading at the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market, NAFEM, the anchor of the single trading window closed at 1,339 naira 20 kobo to a dollar. At the height of the forex crisis in March, the CBN and NCS snapped Descent views and adopted the spot rate for import duty transactions with the benchmark exceeding 1,600 naira to a dollar at some point. Amid the new worry over the lack of clear official direction, the Senate Committee on Finance has offered to work with concerned authorities, including the CBN, on policies that would restore stable naira and guarantee the uh, guarantee the entire market even as it also expressed worry over the fresh crisis in a statement issued yesterday the chairman of the committee muhammad sani musa said the committee was monitoring the situation and committed to working with relevant stakeholders to implement effective policies and, strat and strategies to tackle the issue. He disclosed that the committee is exploring a range of policy options to mitigate the impact of Naira depreciation and foster economic stability. The Nigerian economy is facing significant challenges exacerbated by both internal and external factors. Despite efforts to stabilize and bolster economic growth, the numerous initiatives and bold but necessary steps and policy decisions taken by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the persistent depreciation of the Naira against major foreign currencies has become a pressing concern. Quote, the recent depreciation of the Naira underscores the need for proactive measures to safeguard the stability and resilience of our currency. The Senate Committee on Finance is closely monitoring the situation and is committed to working collaboratively with relevant stakeholders to implement effective policies and strategies. At the IMF World Bank Spring Meetings in Washington last two weeks, the, the central bank governor, Yemi Cardoso, attributed the gains to the convergence of the different rates. According to him, the FX market in Nigeria has seen a surge in activities with turnover levels reaching eyes, reaching eyes not observed in over seven years. The heightened liquidity is believed to 
to instill confidence among investors, businesses and partners, facilitating smoother transactions within Nigeria's forex markets. Johnny Knox is the immediate past chairman, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, Lagos and District Society, Alistair Wilkos. Also joining us is an economic analyst, Mukhtar Mohamed, and development analyst based in the United Kingdom, Festus Tokumbo. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mohamed, let's start with you. How would you want to start given the uh, information I just read out in the, pro in the prologue? Well, um, you see, those rates has um, always been there. Uh, when you talk about market forces, uh, market forces determine rates. Um, if you look at that, if you look at the autonomous foreign exchange market, it's largely driven by market forces. Uh, when you look at the um, exchange rate for um, import duties, at a point it was driven by what happened in the autonomous uh, foreign exchange market. And people like us complain about it because if you say your Naira is on the values, why are you not charging Nigerians high at that undervalued, um, at, at the overvalued rate to bring up import goods, goods into the country? And that also led to high cost of um, goods and services, knowing fully well that Nigerians import virtually 80 to 90 percent of what we consume, especially majority of what household consume. So, um, for the bureau exchange, it has always been the retail side. I keep saying that the current um, uh, challenges that we have with the Naira was driven from the bureau exchange end because the retail investors, when the CBN um, shut down the door of the retail investor, they didn't give them any other window to, to assess effects. So, the demand on the retail side was high, the supply was low. And that was the side that makes the more noise than any other side because that's the side that has to do with SMEs. That have to do with school fees, that have to do with traveling allowance, allowances. I think so. Basically, that's what um, really happened. And when the CBN started giving the brutal change, you should remember that they started it from 1,251, uh, um, they got to 1,100, and the last one was 1,021, 1, which um, was largely the, the CBN fell at that rate. That was um, the price because they're going to do a margin of, uh, I think, um, not imagine above, um, um, is it 1.5%? So if you look at that, um, it's all about um, different rates for now, but the, whole, the, big, the bigger picture is to get this conversion of rates in the long term, but that cannot be achieved in the short term. So you continue to see those um, rate fluctuates. But I think what the CBN is doing is that they know the instrument value of the Naira. So I think they are intervening in the market to make sure that um, they bring that um, um, the currency to that level where we have stability. For now, market forces are playing, speculators are playing, um, the CBN also is playing, import and uh, the custom and exercise are playing. So you have all those people come together to play in the short term. But I think in the long term, the, the Nara will find its, um, its real level, which um, a lot of us know that is um, maybe slightly above 1,000 for now. As the FS begins to improve, you might see the Naira comes a little down. But for now, I don't think it's any cost, it's any cost to worry. If It's not that they are decision, the plan of um, a, um, a single exchange rate like the plan. Even up, up to today, Mr. President was talking to uh, investors in uh, Saudi Arabia where it, in the World Economic Summit, and he said that it's a willing buyer, willing selling a market. So I, I, I think we are still there, but maybe um, because of the volatility and what it has caused in terms of high cost of living, the CBN is trying to stabilize it. It's just like when you have a company, if your value of your company shares on the value, you tend to intervene either by buying back those shares so that you can know that to, for, to give investors confidence that this is the value of your company that is undervalued. I think the intervention of the CBN has to do with the undervalued nature of the Naira, which uh, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and others have agreed that the Naira is currently undervalued. So, I don't think there's any cause for that. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mohamed. Uh, I must say that um, 
for the first time in a long time, you are sounding, if not totally optimistic, you are sounding like somebody who is a bit more reassured with the policy direction of uh, uh, the monetary policy direction of the CBN governor. Um, let me go to Tokumbo now and implore Tokumbo to give us his opening salvo uh, before we go into the nitty gritty of, uh, of the discourse. Tokumbo. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, the you. fact is, I'm not. I'm not a fan of uh, floating rate regime. You know, if you examine the government of uh, President Buhari for eight years, despite the fact that government that government was characterized by multiple exchange, by oil theft, and by air subsidy. I mean, the mirror is it was not depreciating as it was today. This is because a mistakenly understood that. If he flows the currency, that would destroy the social economy very good. So he paid the currency. So what that suggests that every business in Nigeria has to be conducted by the government trade. Now, when President Tinubu come on board, I mean, he threw some of some fantastic policy, uh, unification of the exchange rate, I mean, oil subsidy removal. The idea that should be to peg the currency. We, I mean, floating, adopting the floating rate regime means that the government must have the sufficient liquidity to stabilize the currency market. And the reason for doing that, the reason the, the, uh, the, 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 the activity for doing that has not been, it has not been played out of, on what they actually expected because they, they were proposing, they were suggesting about, about 750 to 800 to US dollar. And they were expecting to have an uh, inflow of, inflow of uh, liquidity. But I mean, it's about eight months that the policy have been implemented. And those uh, those targets are not being achieved. So the idea is to are going to reverse the currency. And currency crisis is not is is a, is a problem that is very synonymous with most low income countries in the world. And this is because they operate international financial system where they are vulnerable to currency crisis. Because you no know, be, between before the first world war in 1914, the UK was the net exporter to the world economy. They were trading in the UK pounds. Then after the second world war in 19 after the Second World War in 1944, it's here to the U.S. Yes, was the net exporter to the global economy. Today is China. If you look at Nigerian economy, that over 30 percent of our trade is to China. So all, all that suggests that if if there is a conversion between the Chinese yen or the Indian rupee, that will stabilize the macro economies. But because the U.S. is not interested in bringing the global currency standard, and what smart countries in the world like India, like Brazil, like South Africa, all they are doing is dollarizing their economy. They are setting their trade in other currency with their top trading partners. But because Nigeria is not an independent political institution, so they, they every time they listen to the IMF, they listen to the World Bank, they follow their policies. And this policy they have not bring about the desired result. Recently, the, the CBN has been adjusted the exchange rate, interest rate, as a consequence of inflation. Because that common practice in the US. When there, is, when there is inflation in the US or in the UK, they are the interest, interest rates. This is because in those countries, inflation is mainly caused by financialization. This, the, the US Federal Reserve will print money, they call it monetary easing, to support their economy. It creates inflation, they will adjust the interest rate. In Nigeria, we have been having inflation since four, 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 five months ago, that are caused by multiple reasons. This may was adjusted the interest rate, and it has not bring out the inflation. This is because but in Nigeria, the, the cost of inflation is currency failures, put, I mean, food crisis, because importing was all right, people are not importing again. So it creates foreign food shortage, it creates uh, food inflation. So, I mean, the idea of following the Western de development plans to address our solution has not bring out the desired result. And that's the link points of development problems. It has created more development in, in Nigeria and more other countries, some of the low income countries in the world. So it is high time. We, I mean, we look inward and design a solution that suits our social economic realities, rather than following the so-called IMA, the World Bank, the U.S. and this thing. We will never address our currency crisis by following the IMA. It won't happen. We need, we need to pay the currency. We need to digitalize the economy. We need to build, become a BRICS member. We need to improve. We need to create policies that improve local production of goods and services. services. That is the only solution that we can stabilize the currency. Um, Thank you. Tokumbo, 
Uh, the Nigerian authorities from the time of Buhari had always wanted a bilateral uh, account settlement scenario with China. Yes. Uh, the Chinese, to the best of my understanding, they talk a good game, but they seldom play it because ultimately they also benefit by trading with us in dollars. They use the the margin they get from me to fortify their own foreign reserve and and consolidate their own economic relevance in the world economic ecosystem so i'm sitting listening to somebody like you now and i'm thinking you see is it that we have not made that effort that china should trade with us based on uh or that we have not even proposed to India that we trade in uh, the, the rupee. But as we speak, the dollar, the greenback is still the king because these countries understand one thing. Their economic relevance is still, apart from the, apart from the robust productivity, internal productivity of the economies. The economic relevance is still a function, amongst other functions, of the robustness of their foreign reserve. And their foreign reserve is mainly denominated in dollars. How would you want to respond to that before I go to China, your question? China, China, China is, is, a, is a net exporter to the global economy. So China will only attract the US dollar. And China will love to trade in this currency. When Owele, Owele was the finance minister. He began the currency swap with, with China. But it was not it was not there to complete the policy. And I remember vividly recently when uh, the, the 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 I mean the 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 the, the, the I mean the legal analyst and uh, uh, I mean in Nigeria was saying that was uh, Dr. Father that was saying that uh, he has an uh, information that the IMF instructed immediately to stop the pursuing, to, to stop initiating the currency swap with China. See, the US, in talk, the US, the West is not interested in the currency swap. They are not interested in it. But, I mean, it's about Nigeria, it's about the US uh, interest. Uh, 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 China, uh, it's not see, about the US interest. Uh, uh, China, is, China, China does is always open. China is, they are flexible. The, the, China, the Indians are open. It depends on the Nigerian government. They have to Countries are doing it. Brazil is doing it. South Africa is doing it. South Korea. They are all dollarizing. If we don't dollarize, dollarize the economy, we will never stabilize the currency. There is no policy the civil can adopt. There is nothing they can do. They need to dollarize. They need to stop pursuing to Tokumbo. Tokumbo, the fact as we speak is that the greenback, the dollar, is still the currency of international trade because the only that's the only two that's the only thing the u.s has on the global economy if you let me finish making my point you'll be you'll be doing yourself a lot of good to better respond to it and if there is any further point i wonder why china talks a good game even in wanting the u.s to know that it has gotten to the level now economically where it could build it could build a parallel geopolitically useful ecosystem and yet china is a bit fudgy dodgy about it is a bit feeble about it and i hear people like you celebrating china when countries like nigeria majority of African countries, majority of Southern Hemisphere countries will gladly today, will gladly and shake China and say India in trading in other in, in even in butter. Let's even remove currency, you know, this thing. Even in butter or in trading based on their currencies relative to the Chinese renminbi or the Indian rupee. And yet, Upon all the theoretical this thing we've had over the years, China is still pussyfooting on it. 
So maybe they know something that you analysts are not, you know, are not uh, uh, factoring into your analysis. That is just the point I'm making. Because the reality speaks to the fact that these opportunities are there, they would ordinarily, on paper, ostensibly, enhance China's geopolitical position in demystifying the hegemony, the economic hegemony of the US dollar, and yet China and China, India are pussyfooting. That's my point. So, as we, as we, I mean, the essence of BRICS. The other way to promote other currencies that are that that other than the US dollar in trade, and that will that will stabilize macroeconomic growth across the globe. And today, Nigeria is not a member of BRICS. Nigeria is not a full member of BRICS. Nigeria should be a front runner in BRICS. That, that, just again, I don't know what they are doing. Oh, okay, let me let me go to your colleague. I come back to you, uh, Mohammed. Uh, for me, I think we need to be looking more in the direction of our fiscal and trade policies. We are essentially a beggarly society. We don't produce what we consume. And when you don't produce what you consume, you will leave the governor of your central bank in the unfortunate scenario we have left this man. And that is, look, when I was telling somebody this morning, I was telling, you know, on, on, on a radio interview that I was doing, I was telling the presenters, if your bank balance is yeah. low, you, you don't blame your bank manager. You, it's you that will re-strategize to go and find the way to increase your revenue so that your ba bank balance can be up. And in, doing, in finding a way to increase your revenue, you want to increase the value you produce so that you will get more value in form of of money to use it to boost your bank balance. All these so-called monetary theories are here. For me, they are, for me, I, I'm sorry to say this, they border on, on, you know, because what we need to do, for me, should be fiscal and trade policies that will enhance, encourage, and governize Productivity and export. How would you respond to that, uh, Mohammed? You 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 hit the nail on the head. And um, why we cannot be in BRICS, like he's saying? Why China cannot agree to take the Nigerian yen? You want to ask? I mean, the Niger Chinese to do the swap deal exchange. You want to ask how much volume of trade does China do with Nigeria? How much volume of trade do we do with India? In terms, when you look at the trade talks, um, um, deficits realize that we are doing more so it would not be to the advantage to have a lot of naira i mean a, 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 we've given them little of yen and they have a lot of naira so that is why it is not um, 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 adding up so when people keep in to talk about oh you need to change to chinese yen the chinese like want it but they realize that your volume of trade what is china importing from nigeria so why is it that the African Continental Trade Agreement have not seen the light of day till today? Because the trade volume between African nations are small. So you cannot have a single currency. You cannot have currency swap when your trade um, volumes are not um, um, at par. Now, you talk about the U.S. If you look at U.S. and China, when Chinese want to flood their market with cheap goods in the U.S., they, they devalue their currency. And because China, U.S. know that the volume of trade between them and China are almost the same, they kill, the U.S. will shiver and say, no, we, we won't support you devaluing your currency. So you just hit the nail. It's all about trade. It's all about trade. And when you talk about trade, you are talking about what you can import from them, what they can import from you, what you can export to them, what they can export to you. That is the only remedy to currency stability. Now, you talk about the physical side. The, the, what we've seen in Nigeria over the years is that the monetary policy seems to be the one that will do both the monetary and the physical. You saw it in the Mayfield time. Now, you may not be in support of currency floor, uh, floating or whatever we call it, but what we have seen over the years is that there was a time that $200 million were given every week to build the change to stabilize the exchange rate. 
And that has led to the depletion of our foreign reserve systems today. And that's why we are where we are today. We are using artificial means to stabilize our currency. The only way your currency can be stable is when your volume of trade begins to increase, not just only in crude oil, Mohammed, but in other areas. Mohammed, thank you very much. I have uh, another gentleman, Alistair Wilkos, a former chairman, uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Lagos, and... Uh, and environs, I have him also guesting today. Alistair, thank you for uh, your presence. How would you want to start your contribution uh, better late than never? Yeah, thank you, Bola, and thank you for the esteemed, uh, highly resourceful uh, participant that we have on the call. Uh, Bola, uh, I, 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 I'm, sorry, I'm sorry I came in late. I, I was in a meeting that just uh, made me forget. I'm so sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you, 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 you are very right in some of the things you have said. And I want to take it from where my brother stops. Um, see, there is no two ways about currency. It's only it, it, it's about volume and what you can offer and what you can give. He was very, very right that there is no way the, uh, uh, um, the, the, Chinese, the Chinese trader will accept Naira when he doesn't have a corresponding import from Nigeria that he will spend that Naira on. Is there's no corresponding import from Nigeria. What is China imposing from Nigeria? Now, you see, at the level of government to government, they can make such policies. But government does not, does not operate the market. It is the private people that operate the market. So if the Chinese trader do not have where he will spend the Naira in Nigeria, what he will use Naira to buy in Nigeria, he will not accept your Naira for, uh, in, in exchange of goods in, in China. And um, there will be a lot of problem with BRICS because, yes, if the volume of trade between them is high enough to justify uh, them having that one currency, fine. But if it is not high enough, you still will need the, the U.S. dollar. Um, uh, Europe uh, 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 for EU to, uh, to for, for for Europe to come up with the euro among uh, 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 among EU nations, they have measured the volume of trade that is available among them and how they can cross border themselves. And of course, these are powerful economies that will withstand the shock. It doesn't diminish whether they've seen it the U.S. dollar, but amongst them. They can have a cross. So that is the fact. And for Nigeria, we are so, it's, I, I, I like what you said, but it's such a dangerous thing because we do not see our country, we do not see ourselves as participating in nation building. We just believe that nation building is only by the government. So the government we like or we don't like, we begin to castigate. How can you be expecting to get cheap dollar within a country that does not, that does not print dollar? The government does not print dollar. So you cannot expect cheap dollar when all you want to do is to eat Kellogg, is to eat uh, basmatic rice, is to, read, is to eat everything foreign, handbag foreign, shoe foreign, hair foreign. So, where, so, so how will you pay for it? They will not accept your naira. And the government cannot satisfy everyone with dollar availability, uh, the, the, what they have. So the dollar's man is like setting. If there is no inflow of, uh, 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 of dollars to the economy, there is no way you can have a, do uh, a dollar at the rate that you want it. I mean, in the in the 70s and 80s, we say the naira was uh, was less than it uh, was higher than the dollar because there was no need for imports. Nigerians were not traveling. Nigerians were eating. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, there were right, local rice. There was Michelin tires. There were uh, uh, there were manufacturing sectors in the country. All they would do is to bring down, is to bring in spare parts, and then they, they and then they will they will they will, they, will, they will assemble them and sell them in Naira. So there was no need for this mad rush for foreign currency. But today, the, the device is the case. Our airports are filled with people traveling. They need dollar. People want to go to school abroad. They need dollar. They need dollar. People want to go to medical tourism abroad. They need dollar. And what, what are the most annoying part of this whole scenario? Most annoying is the use is the sourcing of dollar for domestic transactions. It's sad that till, to, till, till, till this evening, as we are speaking, goods and services are priced in dollar in Nigeria. We now see that, we now see the, the case of Yabelo that is just all over the news, which is unfortunate, and it's not all, the only one, that you will source for close to $1 million within the system to pay for goods and services within Nigeria. What madness can that be? What level of insanity can that be? Which country will survive under that kind of environment? 
We are not even talking about uh, 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 maybe um, uh, foreign services in Nigeria. We are talking about local services in Nigeria. Schools are priced in dollar, and Nigerians will look for schools for dollar in Nigeria to pay for goods and services in Nigeria. Hotels are priced in dollars. Alistair. Uh, 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 what kind of? What, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, are, are, are we, uh, are we has brain? Alistair. Uh, if, any, you, if anybody should know, I think you may be able to help us. I want to believe that it is prima facie illegal for anybody wanting to trade within the borders of Nigeria to denominate the, the transaction in, in, in Forex, be it dollar, pounds, anything apart from the Naira. That is the law. If that, that is, is the, the law. law, if that is the law, why, why, as they rightly do, why is EFCC prosecuting those who are committing economic, uh, economic, uh, this thing by abusing the naira, say the likes of uh, Bob, uh, Bob Risky, the likes of the gentleman that they are prosecuting now, and yet daily we get institutions. What even that American school that has refunded that that seven hundred and something thousand dollars? Why is that school not being prosecuted for being busy for being part of a criminal conduct in the first place? Well, well, right question. And this is the same question. I have been asking all the I was in the, I was in the program in the, in the radio show in Abuja and I asked the same question that because there was there is the law in court in Nigeria and the CBN has been repeated that law that the means of trade in Nigeria the mix of exchange of goods and services in Nigeria is in Naira and schools and institutions in fact that American schools there are there are not them in Lagos who denominate their fees I mean did they get who gave the waiver? Who gave them the waiver? And why is today, like you said, why is today, as of today, the relevant authorities, the uh, uh, Federal Consumer Protection uh, Agency, the EFCC, the DSA, the CBN, have not raised an issue against these institutions? And I'm sure, without considering, and, I'm, and I know of my fact, without considering the fact that two, top officers of CBN have their children in that school. Top NNPC officials have their children in that school. Top presidency officials have their children in that school, in those schools, within this country. And they source for dollar to pay for their school fees. But yeah, yeah Bello is not the only one. Other governors will have their, I'm sure other governors, commissioners, ministers will have their children in that school. And they are doing the same thing. Now, this is where the law is observed in breach. Okay. And every time we want a good nation, I'll, I'll every time we want a better country, I'll, I'll and yet, we do not do what those other countries do. Alistair, 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 we I'll call our laws in breach. Alistair, I think we want a better country. Alistair, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Let me go to one of your colleagues, uh, Tokumbo in England. Tokumbo, yes. it, it, it should be obvious to uh, somebody like you, an economist, who obviously by your training as an economist, you you must look at the bigger picture and the the awesomeness of the data would instruct your opinion. Can you now see, Tokumbo, that it is not indeed a matter that uh, fully resides in monetary policy, be it all this unification, uh, uh, deregulation. Uh, at the end of the day, the ideas that we need to be putting on the table at this juncture, people like Bola Oba, the Tokumbos of this world, the Mohammeds of this world, the Alistairs of this world, the ideas we need to be putting on the table now and be working with to be how to use our knowledge to increase productivity within this economy. Number one, to forestall the humongous amount of imports that we have defined our first lives with, and also that things that will be desire, desirous enough for people outside Nigeria to buy. Is that not what we need to be doing? And those ones 
they 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 are a bit more uh, predisposed, or the, the the proclivities for those ones are a bit more predisposed to fiscal and trade policies more than this belief that the governor of the central bank can do one yo-yo policy yo-yo and get the area stabilized how would you respond to to that as early as early you said it all we need a development plan that suits our social economic realities we need to improve our local production but the comment of the day is not i mean they are following the western policies and as i said it before look for example look at the policy that uh, the cbn is trying to introduce to the nigeria banks the cbn intend to expand the Nigerian GDP by $1 trillion by 2026, basically through bank capitalization. So they, were, they are increasing the bank research from $50 billion to $500 billion. And the question is, how would that create employment? How would that stabilize the, the currency? How would, that, how would that create its budget interest rate? Of course, Nigerian bank is a very, is a very, is very, is a very resourceful sector. You, you only get we only get foreign investors that, that we invest in that bank because the interest rate is about 20, I, mean, I think about 27 percent on, on, on borrowing and about three, less than 4 percent on savings. So, American investors would try to invest one billion dollars in Nigeria bank than invest in US where we have about 4 percent interest. But the question is, how, how, would, that, how would that improve the, 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 the employment? How would that, start, how would that create a fair social economic variables? I believe if I design an economic expansion, we need to focus on both the real economy and the financial economy. We need to, as you said before, we have to say, as you said, we need to. It's not about the finance, it's not about the banks in sector. It's about the real economy. It's about the agricultural sector, industrial sector, service sectors. What are we doing there? The the the, the, the little countries that become a trillion dollar economy is Indonesia, and basically it's from the real sector. If I, I mean, look at the agricultural sector for example. The agricultural sector is about 21 percent of the GDP. Responding for about 40 percent of the, I mean, the labor force. We can actually expand, expand that sector. They can, if it's government invests too much in it, they can create a lot of things. We can invest too much, encourage young Nigerians into the, I mean, empower them to go into mechanized farming with funding and everything, with training. We can make a lot of difference. But but government is not interested in that. Today, Nigerian GDP to Nigerian GDP to. To I got about less than three, two years ago to two percent. Today I think it's about maybe three or four percent. Meanwhile, the EU, the EU, the EU is spending about twenty seven to twenty percent of the GDP on agriculture. And that's an advanced country, that's a technology technology countries. Nigeria is spending less than five percent. I don't want to have full security. So as you said it, we need a development plan that suit our realities. We it's not about following some of this policy from the West. It it won't make any difference in the countries. We need to do things that I mean that stimulate production, local production of goods and services, and that to make a lot of difference in the country. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tokumbo. I, I think we, we will still come to you for a wrap up. We are costing them somewhat. Uh, Mohammed, uh, uh, Mohammed, you are also an economist, I want to believe, and uh, my understanding, I may be wrong, is that. Uh, the relative advantage of um, of relating with an economist in in situations like this is because uh, data, especially awesome data across all the spheres of the economy, uh, is king to to people like you. From what you see now as the reality of this economy and the seeming instability of the Naira, the volatility of the Naira. Uh, what would be your projection for from where we are now, Mohammed? Your well, question. Thank you so much, um, Uncle B. I, I don't think we're in a bad stage from where we were at the inception. But again, it's not as good as we have expected. Uh, um, my colleague in the UK was talking about um, um, the um, bank, bank recapitalization. It's going to create jobs. I can tell you that the reason behind the bank recapitalization is to attract inflow. 
in terms of FX inflow. And that's why the CBN is telling the banks that you don't need to use your retail earning, knowing fully whether the retail earning of the banks will be able to meet whatever uh, 500 million utilization that they need. So definitely want to stabilize the currency. You use a short-term measure first, then you use a medium-term measure, then you use a long-term measure. Now, the short-term measure to stabilize your currency attract inflow. You may get to give their rate at a higher price like what we are paying now that our rate is one of the highest in the world in terms of fixed income market, about 22%. Fine, that is all about attracting inflow. But those inflow have not come because there's no relatively stability. When we, if the rate is 1,000, they know that they will come in at 1,000, exit at 1,000. So basically, Mo Mohammed. that is the challenge. Now back to the data Mo Mohammed. The issue Mo you're talking about. Mohammed, yeah. uh, you have just touched a topic that I would want to please, I would want to enjoin you Please don't be irritated. I would want to enjoin you to just state it all over because many don't quite understand the reason for mandating the banks to recapitalize and yet with a proviso that they must not, like they used to do or they did in the last capitalization, flirt with the savings of their customers. Now, go and find the money. God bless his soul, the guy who died. Well, it was after he died that we discovered that Nigerian bankers will fly private jet to airports in Europe and they will be chaperoned from those airports to go and see prime ministers of countries. About time they started using such influence and clout to bring in monies into Nigeria, not use it. To go on. So, uh, uh, you just made that point, and many Nigerians who are educated don't even know that one of the one of the mechanisms through which we could bring in forex FDI into this into this market is to use the paper success of the banks to attract those foreign direct investors. Please, your take. Exactly, Uncle B, you hit it. And that is what I said. You know, when I started, you said I, I seem to be more confident in the CBN governor. Because I, I, I am more critical of him initially, but I've seen some steps that he's beginning to take. Maybe he's listening to, to people like us and he's beginning to say, look, let me try this step. So for me, that is going to be the game changer. Not only in the area of stabilizing, the banks will be able to do high ticketing deals. Remember that sometimes we want to do some big ticketing deals for maybe especially in the oil and gas sector, we, we have about 12 to 7, 12 to 15 banks coming together to run that day. So very soon we'll have to take it. Dangote refinery, for example. Dangote refinery, for example. One Dan single bank. Refinery, <laughs> exactly, you took it off me. Dangote refinery is being financed by foreign banks. <laughs> so we need to begin to see Nigeria, most in, uh, banks all over the world. Have you asked yourself why the Bank of America is always trying to do business with us? Have we asked ourselves why Goldman Sachs is always talking about Nigeria? So we need to begin to look at the short-term major trade inflow, stabilize your currency, Mid then the mid-term major begin to begin to attract inflow into your country at a lower rate after stability. Yeah. Then the, the long-term major is now begin to export. Because by this inflow that you get, you begin to develop key sector in the Nigerian economy that can begin to attract inflow, agriculture, solid minerals. These are capital intensive investments. Uh, They're not investments Mohammed, I think we will do another show very soon around some of these things. You see, I've gotten to an age. I've gotten to an age now where I don't just do criticism for criticism's sake. I'm not saying that they are, they are getting it right across the value chain, but if journalism, if from the journalism end, has a critic of what what was that I was not happy with, if it could lead me ultimately to becoming a real estate person, because you know what I believe, and some of the ideas I've tested are working. That if this if the government is not doing it, we could collaborate amongst ourselves and solve some of this problem. And today, I'm building houses in dozens. So I, I, I don't just like the idea of just criticizing, but let, you know, we have to go, uh, let me sign up with you and go to your colleagues to get there. We will do something 
something very let's be putting ideas on the table because at the end of the day nigerians like you and i will solve the problem not the not the government and we solve the problem making monies making good transgener transgenerational wealth creating creating it for ourselves thank you mohammed uh alistair how do you want to sign off <laughs> Please, when that next topic comes up, I, I sign in for the best. Um, I think Mohammed is speaking my mind on exactly what I've also been speaking about. Um, yes, there are there are this there, there are functional in the economy. Uh, some people said some people used to say that um Tadoso and uh Yame do are uh, equally to an economist operating in a part of the market for the economy. So um there are some issues that they have not really identified that is because of this discussion. But uh, the more they look at the breadfruit and all the books, the more they are trying to expand what is what is supposed to be. And one of them, which is this value capitalization, and, and like Bola, what you said, nobody knew before now. Let me also just say, God bless the soul of the late uh, bank team. Nobody knew before now how banks spend money going abroad. How banks, how bank teams spend money. And so when Kadesh has seen some of this, I say, okay, this money that you are spending. Bring, make sure that this money attracts good money back into the system. I think it, I think it, it's the right step. And then, uh, 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 in addition to doing big deals, bank will do more retail. The bank doesn't give credits. How many banks give housing credit? I will credit. credit. But they prefer to give consumer consumption credit because you know it's case a case like that. So when you have excess money, you have both. You be forced to give domestic. Uh, 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 long term, uh, medium term, and long term uh, credit, which will be uh, more productive to the economy than uh, just uh, uh, mercantilist uh, uh, ma uh, 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 SMEs. SMEs will be able to access funds that will have a long term beneficial because you have excess when you have food and you will not keep it like I do. You must be able to now develop businesses, not only looking for blue chip business, so you now go for the green chips. Develop businesses, develop initiatives. Okay, Alistair, Alistair, what are things you think in the economy? I think, like you said, Bella, this economy is not only government driven, but every one of us has a role to play. And the more we keep advancing people to have faith in the economy, not to just be critical, not to just look at the Naira or the Pearl of Rice and you go on down Nigeria. No, there are critical issues that you need to look into as to how you can contribute. Oh, okay, I, I need to uh, to be. I need to give. I need to give, I, I need to, give I need to give to Kumbo the opportunity to sign off too. Alistair, uh, thank you. We really thank you for uh, stampeding you from your meeting uh, to come and uh, uh, grace this sh uh, show today with your knowledge, experience, and wealth of uh, this thing. Uh, to Kumbo, uh, how would you? How would you want to? Um, Wrap it up. Your your epilogue now. Yeah, uh, my colleagues are trying to say we need to look inward to try to I mean apply indigenous solution to our uh, problems. I mean the I mean the CBN is I mean is some of the policies that is fine. I need to do more. But I still believe that I mean I'm not too pessimistic that if floating reach I mean, we will not make our currency to, 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 to create currency, it won't create currency stability. So the earlier the peg currency and I mean allocate our uh, forest to essential goods and services that make that create about consumer pricing stability the better. And I, I think we we've improved our OSCs already, we are generating more more uh, revenue from the OSCs and all that thing for FDI. But and it, the the, the CBNF is regularly the I mean the, the speculators and uh, the problem with him is, I mean, I mean, I mean, supplying uh, liquidity to, to BDC. I mean, but I mean, it's not, I mean, and that is and the reason why the thing is falling out because how are they able to maintain that? So, so basically, I mean, everything is, I think they should just look, look, I mean, put an open eye, look inward, do things well, and so that, I mean, we can, the general can see, I mean, the policy can affect. The, the people are the low level social that uh, create a social development and stability. So, Kumbo, Thank you. At least you function in an economy where uh, monetary policy is seemingly taming inflation, maybe not at the rate that you guys want, uh, but it's taming inflation from what it was about a year ago, a more four point something percent, now two point something percent. 
Uh, I wish the Americans well. They are also trying, but uh, uh, we have no. We can only be praying and hoping that uh, this thirty-something percent, especially food inflation, uh, would heed all these monetary policy uh, gymnastics. Because at the end of the day, what you don't have, you can't eat. Thank you, gentlemen, for a good show. Always, they always treasure your your presence whenever they call people like you. We look forward to having another uh, economic related show soon, and we give our word that we'll be getting back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Viewers, this is where we wrap it for today. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening. <laughs>